Hello? Can I read the message? Or... No, I don't know the number. Hello? Message? Or... Uh, yes. Do you know what? Is Mr. Jefferson there? Uh, do you know when to expect him? No, no message. Come here, you two. Come on, come on, I'm not going to bite. Now, I am a very kind and generous person. If I veer at it, it is on the side of amiability. I have been watching you two for the past week, and I find you to be very likable young people. And I know that when we first met, I was a little unjust towards you. And for that, I am sorry. And I wish in the future you wouldn't look at me as something out of Edgar Allan Poe. Now, how do you like my talk? Thank you, Mr. Whiteside. This makes things much pleasanter. And I think that tie is very pretty. Yes, now that I'm speaking to Mr. Whiteside, I don't mind telling you I've been admiring all your times. Do you like this one? I certainly do. Then it's yours. Ah, oh, ice skating, eh? I used to catch figure eights myself. Arm in arm with Betsy Ross, waving the flag behind us. <laughs> it was wonderful all day today. Let's come up with Mr. Jefferson today. Maggie, ice skating? Yes, and she's good too. I got a marvelous picture of her. Were they still there when you left? I I think so. Yes, they were. Mr. White said, mind if I take a picture of you? I'd love to have one. Of course. Would you like my profile? I'm afraid you're done for now, Mr. Whiteside. My brother is a camera on the Thank you, Mr. Whiteside. Of course, Richard. Hello, Mr. Whiteside. Hello, Zoe. Good evening, Cher. Really, Cher, you have this room looking like an old parrot cage. Did you not blow us out? What's the matter here? Cat run away with your talking? Don't look at me in those great, great cow eyes and sex ridden hag. Where have you been all afternoon? Allie cutting around Bert Jefferson? Jerry, Bert put his play me this afternoon. It's superb. It isn't just that play written by a loose gentleman, it's superb. I want you to read it tonight. It just cries out for Cornell. Will you send it to her, Jerry? And will you read it tonight? I will not. And I'll not read it any other night. And since we're on the topic of Bert Jefferson, would you kindly ask him if you would like to pay your salary, since he takes up all of your time? Oh, come now, Sherry. It's not as bad as that. I couldn't even read you not knowing a paywall is frequent. Stop behaving like a spoiled child, Sherry. Don't take that patronizing tone with me, flea fitted Cleopatra. I am sick and tired of you sneaking out like some above sick high school girl every time my back is turned. Well, Sherry, I'm afraid you hit the nail on the head. Stop acting like Zazu Pitts and explain yourself. Well, make it good, Cherry. I'm in love. <laughs> Nonsense. This is merely delayed you. Well, I'm afraid this is it. You are going to use a very excellent secretary. You are out of time. Yes, I think I am. A little. But I'm a girl who's waited a long time for this to happen, and now it has. Mr. Jefferson doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to try my darkness to marry him. Is that all? Yes, well, except that I suppose this is what might be called my resignation. As soon as you've got some else. Now look here, Maggie. We have known each other for a very long time, and you are indispensable to me. And I think I am unselfish enough not to let that stand in the way where your happiness is concerned. Because whether you know it or not, I have a deep affection for you. I know that, Sherry. Then I will not stand here and let you make a fool of yourself! I'm not, Sherry. You are! You're behaving like a booth targeted heroin. Why, it's unbelievable that a girl for the past ten years has had the great of the world served up toward a silver platter. Why, it's nothing but a kind of temporary insanity when you are swept off your feet in seven days by some second-rate small-town newspaper man. Sherry, I can't explain what's happened. I can only tell you that it's so. It's hard for me to leave too, Sherry. Here I am, a hard bit of Taking like a true story magazine and liking it. Discovering the moon in high skating. I keep laughing to myself all the time, but there it is. What can I do about it, Sherry? I'm in love. We're leaving. Hip or no hip, I don't care if I fracture the other one. We are leaving. Get a train schedule and start packing. I will get these ants out of this room as 
didn't dance, Miss Stardust. No good, Jerry. No good. I'll be back in the next streamline train. It's unbelievable. You would become the wife of the editor of the Missilia Journal and have dinner for Mr. and Mrs. Stanley, Mr. and Mrs. Poopface, and the rest of the members of the Book of the Month Club? Sherry, I've had ten years of great things in my life. It's all been enough to give it to you for. I've had every minute of it. It's been wonderful to you, Sherry. Gaining, stimulating, I don't think anyone's had the fun we've had. But a girl can't laugh all the time, Sherry. There comes a time in her life that she wants Bert Jefferson. You don't know Bert, Jerry. He's gentle and he loves soothing and... Well, I love him, that's all. Well, I remain completely unconvinced. You are drugging yourself in this Joe Crawford fantasy. And before you become completely anesthetized, I shall pull you to your senses. I shall bring you to your senses. Now listen to me, white side. I know you. Lay off. I know what a devil you can be. Don't drug yourself into that idea that all you think of is my happiness because you're thinking of yourself a little bit too and all those months of bringing in somebody new. I've seen you in a passion before when your life gets disrupted and you can't dine a cut on July 5th boo boo. Well, that's too bad, but there it is. I'm going to marry Bert if they'll have me. And there's nothing you can do about it. Don't try any of your tricks. So I'm on to every one of them. So lay off. That's my message to you, big Lord Paul Boy. <laughs> Hello, connect you with the transatlantic operator. Transatlantic operator? Yes, uh, I would like to put in a call. Uh, this is in the cell 142. I'd like to put in a call for Miss Lorraine Sheldon. S H E L D O N. Uh, she sailed on the Normandy day before yesterday. Uh, okay, well, will it take long? Oh, okay, this is Mr. Whiteside. Thank you. Well, well, good evening, Mr. Whiteside. Go away, I'm busy. Now, what would be the best news I could possibly bring you? You have hydrophobia. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, Mr. Whiteside, you are a well man. You can get to walk right now if you wanted to. Why, you can leave here tomorrow. What do you mean? Well, sir, I, I had a look at those x-rays again, and do you know what? I was looking at the wrong x-rays. I was looking at old Mr. <coughs> Bob's x-rays. You are perfectly, absolutely well! Keep your voice down, will you? What's wrong, I mean, Aren't you pleased? <coughs> Delighted. Oh, naturally. Oh, this is a very unfortunate bit of news. And it comes in a very curious moment. Dr. Bradley, I was just reading your book, uh, 40 Years... An Ohio Doctor, yes? Yes, and I consider it to be being close to one of the greatest literary contributions of our time. Mr. Whiteside! So strongly do I feel about the fact that I have a proposition to make to you. Now, here and there, it looks a little uneven, a little rough. <coughs> I would like to stay here in the and work with you on it. Mr. Whiteside, I would be so terribly honored. Yes, there is only one problem. If my lecture bureau and my radio sponsors were to learn that I am well, they would insist on my fulfilling my contracts and I would be forced to leave the facility. Therefore, we mustn't tell anyone that I am well. Not anyone at all. Oh, I see, I see. Not even Miss Cutler. Do you understand? No, no one. Not a soul. Not even my wife. Very well. Oh, it's the white side. Oh, but when do we begin work? Tonight? Oh, I just have one patient that's dying, and then I'll be perfectly free. <laughs> oh, uh, this is a private call. Um, tomorrow morning, yes. Tomorrow morning. Oh, tomorrow morning it is. Oh, 
will all be so proud to work with you, Mr. Whiteside. You're going to be very proud, Mr. Whiteside. Most very proud. Very, very proud. Yes, I know. Hello? Yes, come through. Hello? 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 I have a very exciting bit of news for you. I have just discovered a magnificent play with a enchanting part. Cornell would give her eye to the play, but I think I can get it for you. Now, now, just listen, just listen. You see, it's just, there's one problem. Uh, I was given a play with the idea that I would give it to Cornell. I, I know, I know. But it, it just takes a little bit of doing it. I think you're the girl that can do it. Just, you need to get on a train and get out here. Yes, yes, I know. No, you're welcome. No, no don't send me any messages. Just get on a train and arrive. Yes, yes. Oh, don't worry, Blossom. Goodbye. Ah, oh, Miss Green. You are looking absolutely radiant this evening. Huh? Sherry, I'm sorry for what I said before. I'm afraid I was a little unjust. Oh, it's fine, Maggie. We all lose our tempers now and then. I promise I said that I would prefer to go see a movie, but we'll come back and figure it with you instead. Very well. See you soon, Sherry dear. Goodbye. I just a little wabbit in the sunshine. I just a little wabbit in the rain. I nibble on my leg to sleep all morning. I get to talk about Miss Cutler's sister all under the tree. Thank you, Joanne. Oh, I've never seen you with so many friends as me before. Can't wait for tomorrow. When will Mr. Whiteside open on Miss Cutler? Well, you see, Joanne. Christmas is Mr. Whiteside's personal property. He invented it, and it belongs to him. First thing tomorrow morning, he will open each and every one of those presents. He'll be the gosh darnest fuss you ever saw. Well, look how many presents he got from Shirley Temple, William Black Belts, Billy Rose, Ethel Waters, Someone's at home. Can't wait to see what's in them. Used to be, you ink-stained hack. 
Beverly Carlton is the single greatest talent in English theater today. Maggie, take this illiterate numbskull out of my sight and don't bring him back. Don't worry, Mr. Whiteside, I won't be back. Hello, can I read the mansion house? Mansion house? Uh, yes, it is. Has Miss Lorraine Sheldon arrived yet? Yes, Lorraine Sheldon from New York. She has, okay? Singapore, Mexico, Honolulu, and 
take pictures. Good pictures. Bad pictures. Millions of them. Say, wouldn't I like it though? If I could do that, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. Then why don't you? If I was your age, I'd do it like a shot. Well, you know why. Dad. Richard, do you really want to do this more than anything else in the world? I certainly do. Then do it! Hello, Mr. Whiteside. Hello, my dear. So I'm afraid Richard is all up to you. Well, I guess it is. Thank you, Mr. Whiteside, for this as well. And I'll never forget it. Right on, Richard. June, are you coming upstairs? In a few minutes. Well, when you do, knock my door, will you? I need to talk to you. Yes, I will. Mr. Whiteside. June, my dear, you were too young to know about the elbow murder, weren't you? I have about five different murders, and the elbow piece is one of them. Would you like to hear about it? Well, Mr. Whiteside, I wanted to talk to you. Would you mind? Before a few minutes. It's important. I take it this is about your young authority over the factory? Yes. I just can't seem to make Pop understand. It's like talking to a blank wall. If he won't leave him, he won't even talk about it. What are we going to do, Mr. Whiteside? Sandy and I love each other. I don't know where to turn. Sure. I'd like to meet your young fellow. I'd like to meet him for myself. Would you? Would you meet him? He's outside now. He's in the kitchen. Good. Bring him right in. Mr. Whiteside, Sandy's a very sensitive boy. You will be nice to him, won't you? Damn it, June! Will you like that I'm always kind and courteous? Bring him this idiot in. <laughs> oh, my God. Sandy. Sandy. Here he is, Mr. Whiteside. How do you do, sir? How do you do, my boy? I've heard a lot about you from June in the past few weeks. And if she's told me correctly, you two babes in the wood have quietly gone out of your minds. There's another name for it. It's called love. Well, you've come to the right place. Dr. Sheridan Whiteside. Broken hearts mended. Bricks aligned. Hamburgers. Go right ahead. Well, if June has told you anything at all, Mr. Whiteside, you'll know the jam will You see, I work for the labor union. Whiteside. I'm an organizer. I've been organizing the minute Mr. Stanley's factory, and Mr. Stanley's pretty sore about it. <laughs> oh, bet. Did June tell you that too? Yes, she did. Well, that being the case, Mr. Whiteside, I don't think I have the right to try and influence June. If she marries me, it means a definite break in the family, and I don't like to break that about. But the trouble is, Mr. Stanley's so stubborn about it, so arbitrary. You know, this is not something I've done just to spite him. We fell in love with each other. But Mr. Stanley behaves as though we were all a big lot. John L. Lewis sent me here just to marry his daughter. He's tried to fire Sandy twice out of the factory, but could not have the wagon act. Thank God. Yes, he thinks I'm a bad too. If you'd only let me talk to him. If you'd let Sandy talk to him. Well, we've gone over that, Julie. Anyway, this morning I got word of meet in Chicago. I may have to go on the first boat from there. So you see the jam here. Sandy's leaving tonight, Mr. Whiteside. He'll probably be gone here. Simply got to decide. Now. June, my dear, this is simple. Why, it's, it's no problem at all. Why, to my dad and I, it just seems as simple as anything else you can imagine. How do I put this? You see... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello. It's Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I'm here. How is my little dash of genius? What? Now, ten seconds more. <laughs> yes, yes, I hear it. It sounds just like static. June, my dear. Yes, yes, I'm here. Now tell me. Who is in Lana Turner's sweater these days? <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. Merry Christmas. And remember, it's not your fault. Don't worry about Fantasia. It wasn't your fault. Beethoven has a great take in years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> goodbye. Do you know what that was you just listened to? The voice of Donald Duck. Yes, Mr. Disney calls me every Christmas so that I can hear it. No matter where I am. Why, two years ago, I was walking on the bottom of the ocean floor, but he still got me. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. 
Where were we? Ah, June, I like your young man. Why, that's why I wanted to meet him. I have an unerring instinct about people. And well, and well, as I see it, no matter what his beliefs are, he's entitled to them. And you shouldn't let anything stand in your way. Why, strict to this externals, what does it come down to? The possibility of making your father unhappy. Is that it? Very unhappy. So what if he is? It's good for him. Builds his character. I mean, look at me. I left home at the age of four and have been back since. They hear me on the radio and that is good enough for them. <laughs> so, your advice is to go ahead with me, Mr. Wetzel. It is. Marry him tonight, Joe. <coughs> you, you mean that, Mr. Wetzel? No, I mean you should marry Hamilton Fish. If I didn't mean it, I wouldn't say it. In my own opinion, you aren't good enough for this young man. Come on, Daisy, stop dawdling. Who's that? I shouldn't. Shall I tell you something? I 
think from something he said just before sailing that he's finally coming around to it. It wasn't definite, mind you, but don't be surprised if I am Lady Bottom before very long. Lady Bottom, won't Kansas City be surprised? But I shall be a flower girl and give the groom an iron toothpick as a wedding present. Now come, let's hear some of your skull number. Well, and Mr. Whiteside. No! Go away! Who's that? He's fixing the plumbing. Well, what about this place here? After all, I've come all the way from New York, even on Christmas Eve, and I've been so excited ever since your phone call. Where is it? And when can I read it? Here's the situation. We all heard a young musical man here in town, Bert Jefferson. Now, he gave the play with understanding that I give it to him for now, and it's a magnificent part. God knows I feel this loyal to kids. Sherry? Not now, Buxom. Well, there you have it. I have done this much. It's up to you to do the rest. <gasps> Darling, you're wonderful. Does he know I'm coming, Mr. Jefferson, I mean? No, no. You're just out here visiting me. That's all. Invite him out for dinner and work your, way, work your way around to the play. I don't have to tell you how to do this part. How did you do all those other parts? Sherry! Well. I'll just go back to the hotel and change into something more attractive. I just got my bags and I'll try over here. Jerry, what do you think? I'm just thinking the most beautiful... Oh, hello, Maggie. I knew you must be around here somewhere. 